Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Robert Stickle. I'm also joined by my colleagues, Jim Patterson and Paul Estabrooks. Jim and Paul will be today's presenters as they show you how OnePlan is aligned with Microsoft's project and portfolio management vision. I hope that today's presentation grants you some insight into the world of project and portfolio management. And I hope that you get excited for the new developments happening within the industry and here at OnePlan. Thank you again, and I will now turn the presentation over to Jim. Thanks, Robert. Welcome, everybody. Uh, we're excited to present this uh, latest episode of our ongoing series of webinars. Uh, today's topic is how OnePlan is aligning with Microsoft and its project and portfolio management vision. Um, a lot of changes happening on the Microsoft side, and uh, we're going to talk to you about how OnePlan is going in lockstep with Microsoft and even further extending uh, what Microsoft's doing to provide the most value to our customers. So first off, uh, let me talk a little bit about um, why we're in a position to be in alignment. Uh, we're consistently recognized as a leader, OnePlan Solutions is, in the Microsoft partner realm, specifically in the realm of project and portfolio management. Uh, we were just recently uh, awarded uh, the 2021 Global uh, Project and Portfolio Management Partner of the Year uh, in the Microsoft ecosystem as well as, and as you'll see with the topic we have today, also we're uh, named a finalist in the Partner of the Year for Power Apps and Power Automate. Uh, dovetail that with our previous wins, as well as our multiple gold certifications for Microsoft, as well as our experience in traditional project and portfolio management, as well as certification in scaled agile. Um, we can really help organizations uh, in a modern project and portfolio management context. So how we do that as an organization is we help organizations with overall business agility transformation, not just the systems like you're gonna see here today, but in the people, the process, and the technology aspects that it takes to be successful for adoption and to get the return on these things. And we really focus on doing this in the Microsoft Cloud in the areas of Microsoft 365, the Power Platform, uh, Microsoft Azure and Azure DevOps, and obviously our own IP with one plan. So let's talk about what that Microsoft vision is for the future of project and portfolio management uh, so we can establish how we're aligning with that. You know, Microsoft is about bridging the work management gap in today's modern ecosystem. You know, we all manage projects, but in this day and age, not everybody's a classically trained project manager. Sometimes people, these occasional or accidental project managers get named to manage a project, but don't have formal project management training. So that's a large uh, percentage of the people we find out there that are tasked with such endeavors. We also believe collaboration is critical and older tools don't necessarily lean on the collaborative side of things. So without good collaboration uh, enablement, it can be chaotic because work is happening everywhere and we're in ge geographically distributed teams. Um, we're working more remotely because of the pandemic and post pandemic things that are uh, going on and policies and uh, approaches that we're taking. And on top of that, we want to manage work our way. There is an evolving set of ways to manage projects, you know, not just traditional waterfall ways of managing projects, more agile approaches, more lean approaches, and some hybrids along, uh, along the way uh, that are being adopted by organizations. But sometimes the legacy tools we've been given don't allow us to maximize those methodologies and the benefits of them. Consequently, a lot of teams, especially with easy access to tools in the cloud, are choosing their own tools to succeed. A little bit of shadow IT and, and, and getting their own tools that may not have been issued uh, as a corporate wide standard. And we wanna use our data effectively, but it's a mess because of this proliferation of tools. We have pockets of data all over the place and the mashing up and aggregating of that data can be a highly manual and time consuming uh, and frustrating process. And we need to make better decisions. And because of this siloing of data, uh, uh, we have no good access to a big picture automatically. So once again, it has to be a manual process to make that happen. So this is some of the landscape that's being addressed in this work management gap that's seen today by Microsoft. Now, there's a lot of cloud platforms out there, but a lot of them are specialized or verticalized or in one genre of tool. So most platforms you work with that are non-Microsoft, for example, uh, only see some of the business data because they have very specialized niches or uh, segments of the platform that they're uh, they're addressing. In reality, most organizations have a much more connected set of processes. And given that, there's a lot of things that need to talk to one another in this day and age that uh, have to uh, leverage one another's uh, outputs or inputs. 
And to have these things working together is the only way to optimize and streamline processes to their ultimate end. And Microsoft is in a unique position to bring these things all together between their cloud offerings in Office or Microsoft 365, the business solutions platform in Dynamics 365, as well as uh, people putting their own workloads in Azure or using things like Azure DevOps. Uh, these aspects bring together all dimensions of what's required in an organization in order to make these things in project and work management happen. So even within Microsoft, there's a proliferation of tools. On these different platforms, there's different tools like Teams and Planner and To-Do and Outlook and Project and Project for the Web and you know Azure DevOps with Azure Boards and all these types of things. So bringing these things together, even within the Microsoft context, becomes paramount. So the vision, if you want to boil it down from Microsoft, and this is a Microsoft quote, to have teams work the way they want, but have enterprises get the results they need. This is Microsoft's work management vision and where they're headed with their most recent and their uh, planned endeavors and developments. So this starts in the project and RAM management realm by re rethinking project. And Microsoft Project for the Web is uh, the foundation of what that scheduling and work management capability is. It really is providing a simple web-based uh, project management tool that's accessible even to that occasional or accidental project manager, giving people simple grids to work with or timelines or even working with the data in terms of boards and Kanban style. It uh, gives people the ability to work the way they want in a simple tool that doesn't have a lot of the complexity of Microsoft Project on the desktop for those classically trained project managers. So it's really about a fresh new experience, a modern UI, and easy to get started and get everybody involved that needs to manage a project. Now, one of the innovative things is that this new uh, Microsoft Project and Portfolio Management vision is built on the Microsoft Power Platform. And that includes things that you might be familiar with, Power BI for business analytics and, and, and visualization. Power Automate for uh, process and workflow automation, as well as sharing of data between applications. And Power Apps, the low-code, no-code platform for having applications, all of which store their data in a robust database repository in the back end known as Dataverse. Now, Microsoft Project for the Web is built on this platform. So those of you, and we'll have a, uh, a webinar next week talking about the future of Project Online. Uh, and Project for the Web is built on this Dataverse and Power Platform infrastructure, whereas Project Online was built on a SharePoint foundation. So a little different platform uh, with benefits to going there based upon the, the, the modern capabilities that are in there. Now, if you're wondering about whether or not this is a risky bet, Sachin Nadella himself, the CEO of Microsoft, has says that the Power Platform is one of the big bets that Microsoft is making in core to what they're doing as a company. So rest assured that if you go in this direction, you'd be following where Microsoft is headed. Now, if you think about Project for the Web and people, you know, building multiple different project plans, different people, et cetera, having all that data natively stored in Dataverse, actually, it just natively and automatically stores that data in that repository and even allows things like co-authoring by multiple people if you want to collaborate on project plans and those types of things. But given the fact that it's stored in this common repository, uh, it allows us the opportunity not just to work with schedules, but to work with our projects in the context of an overall PPM solution. And that's been done by making that data accessible in Power Apps uh, for an overall PPM solution experience. Now, uh, we're proud to say that One Plan Solutions was integral in developing a PPM accelerator, meaning you don't have to build your own Power App to do this, uh, to have an accelerator that has the basic capabilities that people want in a project and portfolio management solution uh, readily available and have the data from Project for the Web automatically be rendered there. Uh, this adds things beyond the schedule. It allows you to have things like project intake and requests to aggregate projects into programs by logical groupings, uh, store the projects themselves and have a roster or register of projects themselves, be able to manage a central uh, set of resources as well as a report set uh, that uh, is out of the box to get you started. And um, you know we've helped Microsoft do this and get people quickly into the new solution and in the new platform. What's in there? Well, if you think about Project for the Web by itself as a web-based tool, it allows you to start projects and allows you to put tasks and schedules and assign resources to those things in there. So it does the basics. But what the accelerator does is wrap around this, uh, the ability to do it to other things that people might wanna do um, with their projects and their portfolios. 
you know, track risks and issues, uh, log change requests, put uh, narrative-based status reports together, uh, provide some governance and uh, highlight some KPIs and color codings on status. And the, also that project request and intake place so that uh, you can have a funnel or a pipeline of things coming in that might potentially become projects. As well as I had mentioned, uh, grouping these projects into programs so that you can do some program management as well. And all the while having a native feed uh, to a set of Power BI reports with a native O data feed so that your dashboards and reports from this become a natural output of the process so you're not cobbling those things together manually or semi-manually like we talked about in the pain points and bridging the gap earlier. Now, to that end, what's in that accelerator may meet the needs of a lot of organizations, especially emerging PMOs that are, that are really trying to grow and mature. But analysts such as the Gartner Group says there are critical capabilities for project and portfolio management that aren't necessarily yet being addressed by that accelerator in the current offering. And those things can be added to. Uh, and some of the things you see here are things like time reporting, uh, detailed financial management, resource capacity planning, and even advanced project portfolio management capabilities, things like what if scenarios, et cetera. And that's where the future of this really extends to where one plan actually adds to what's there for Project for the Web in this and really makes this into a extended, more fully functional and more adaptive, as we'll talk about here, project and portfolio management or PPM solution. Now, what do we add to the mix? Well, if you look at the blue bars in here and the blue blocks, uh, things like uh, strategy execution as well as strategic alignment with your projects, more advanced portfolio management capability, which includes things like what if analysis and prioritization models, uh, detailed financials with financial tracking by detailed cost categories and cost accounts and different cost types and be able to track things like budget versus revised forecasts and actuals. Uh, resource capacity on a time phase basis so that we can look at seeing do our projects have on a time phase basis, do we have the resources to fulfill on our commitments? And even on the bottom here, when we look at task management from a team member perspective, a my work area where a team member can have one place to go to look at everything that's on their plate and be able to provide task status and feedback to the project or a timesheet if that's required for the type of organization that you have. Now, on top of that, uh, the new platform and the new accelerator really only address natively the plans from Project for the Web. There's many organizations and people within organizations that still want to use Project for the Desktop because of its robust capabilities, that project professional. Or they might want to be doing some agile things in something like Azure DevOps or maybe even Jira or other tools like that. Uh, one plan actually extends not only the feature set that you see in the blocks over there, but the ability to bring in data from other plans outside of just Project for the Web and bring it into a more holistic, adaptive portfolio. We do that because one plan has its own integration and connector platform and allows us to bring in software development or agile tools or financial or ERP or HR data other work management tools, service management data, CRM data, or even ideation data from other tool sets. And the idea is to be able to bring this all together so we have that central hub and we don't have that pain of those silos of information that we can't easily bring together. That's often the, the case in many organizations today. So one plan is actually built for the Microsoft Cloud, but also with a fused user experience. Now we're gonna focus on the Power Platform today and the Accelerator. And so one plan is designed to just add to the mix with the accelerator that you're gonna to see today. But it also can be surfaced and consumed through Dynamics if you're a Dynamics user. It can be surfaced through Azure DevOps in your use of Agile, and people can access the one plan capabilities there. Or even through Teams where people are collaborating and doing meetings today, it can actually, it's designed as an authorized Teams app as well. But our focus today is really gonna be around this Power Platform and the Power App and extending what Microsoft's offering is there on PPM. So the key is, is that you can stay working in the tools that you work in every day. So what Paul's gonna go through today in the demonstration is the value added capabilities that we bring to the mix and how we are aligning and extending the vision of Microsoft. For example, being able to do portfolio visibility across all work, regardless of what tools you're doing your scheduling in. The ability to do prioritization models, the ability to do um, Kanban style or uh, a portfolio planning uh, in a more Kanban style where like agile teams are doing program increment planning. The ability to do product roadmaps as a natural view of the data that you have in there. The ability to do portfolio tree hierarchies if you wanna structure things and 
uh, a portfolio hier hierarchy like you might do in something like SAFE and Scaled Agile. Resource capacity planning, where we have this time phase capacity planning, both with generic and named individual resources for resource workload transparency to understand what are we looking at from a resource impact if we do the portfolio we have in mind. And be able to do resource negotiation, the byplay between project managers and functional managers who, um, who deploy the resources, as well as being able to do what if analysis and resource prioritization based upon the selection and the staging and timing of projects. We do the same thing with financial planning, detailed cost categories and financial tracking, as well as being able to do those same types of what if analysis based on our financial constraints. That my work area we talked about where a team member can actually just go to one place and see all the things they've been assigned across their different projects, whether they be tasks or issues or risks or backlog items, whatever it might be, and also do a timesheet should that be needed. Also key as a, is this insights and AI-based capability where a user has a home page where they can see what that requires their attention, what they might be missing, what they might have overlooked, what might be late, uh, conversations and communications around those things to be able to give you assist and help you keep your eye on the ball and deliver things on time and with effectiveness. On top of that, strategic portfolio management using an OKR type of capability add strategic portfolio management on top of your traditional project portfolio management. So not only can you execute on strategies with objectives and key results and track how you're doing on executing on that strategy, you can also align your projects from that project portfolio with those strategies. These are things that um, more mature organizations in the, in the PPM realm are looking to do these days to make sure they're working on the right things, not just doing things well. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Paul to give us a demonstration of these things in action. Good day, everyone. So I'm going to walk through, I'm actually going to use two different environments here quickly. I'd show you a couple of different things here and how we do this. So step one I wanted to show you very quickly is the accelerator itself. And so I am logged into our demo accelerator environment. This is what you can get today from Microsoft. So you can very quickly see that we can do uh, some of the items that Jim showed in some of his slides. The idea of a project request. I can come in here, create a new request, manage my sort of my intake uh, in, a, in a power app here with some, some key information. I could then define my programs and say, this is a program that I wanna work on. And if I jump into it, it has within it a set of projects that we're trying to manage. We can roll that information up. A program itself can have both financials and a budget and status reporting and all the rest of it. Then there's the actual projects. So I could come in here and see my projects. If I click on any one of them, there's information I can capture about that project. I can also dive into, and this is where we leverage project for the web and Microsoft's core capabilities. There's my little project schedule that I'm working on and I'm tracking my tasks. I could view that in a timeline uh, and so forth. So let me just jump because it's always interesting to see the actual Gantt chart, there it goes. So I can look at my different tasks and manage it that way. I have my resources and I have some reports in Power BI. Rich capability. But if we look at this sort of from a crawl, walk, run scenario, we would say this is sort of the crawl scenario. This is the basic out of the box capabilities. There's good functionality here that you can use to do things. Again, before I leave here, risks, issues, change requests, status reporting, all of that capability as well, all using Power Apps to do that. Very rich, solid capabilities. What Jim talked about and us extending it, and I'm gonna show one extension here and then I'm gonna to jump to one that's got even more capabilities and spend my time there, is you'll see when I switch the area to the one plan one very quickly, now a bunch of other capabilities start to light up. And Jim mentioned these when he was talking, the idea of my work and my timesheet. So the ability to track work and capture that across all of the projects we're working on or potentially with a timesheet across a whole host of, of time effort scenarios. The idea that I could then go do prioritization and analysis and other rich views here using that capability. Okay, so I just let that load quickly. Too many clicks. There you go. And now I can look at all my projects in another view and pivot on this, do prioritization. I'm going to demo that in a second in the next environment do board views, roadmaps, and so forth. So we've extended the accelerator. This capability is embedded in the accelerator. It's a, a simple switch to uh, that one plan area, and all of the Microsoft capability is now further augmented by our capabilities and our add-on components to give you a much richer user experience. 
But the real beauty of Power Apps is that I can then take that, I'm gonna jump over here to, to this environment, and I can extend it further, and I can build the components that an organization may want, and I'm gonna dive into some of this for, for the time we have today, and look at this in, in all of its capabilities. So again, I'm still in Power Apps, we're still extending through that capability, but here you could see we've layered in insights, the ability to analyze the project data and look for, for compliance issues or warning signs of other data. There's my work in my timesheet, so I can click through and see my timesheet as it loads up here and look at all the, all the work that I'm supposed to be working on and how am I reporting on that work, and there's the timesheet on the screen. So that capability across all the projects. But some of the other things that Jim mentioned was corporate strategy, the idea that I could have objectives and key results. So here in a Power App are my objectives, and here are the key results that I might have. I wanna look at those a little bit differently, so I'm gonna click on a different module here and quickly blow that out so I could see it. And if I expand it, my objectives are linked to my key results, and I can articulate the strategy of our organization and how we intend to move forward and what we're tracking and scoring and, and making sure that we're being successful. I might want to extend that intake to be much richer in capability. So again, using Power Apps, we have that ability here to add functionality, add capability, tie it to other systems, bring other data in, and then make that part of our adaptive project and portfolio management solution. And then down here, we've added the concept of por portfolios on top of projects in in programs, which in one of Jim's slides, he showed that graphic with the different components and portfolios was added, and then the analyzer. So a couple of things that I wanna just show here quickly, I'll use the analyzer as the quick route for me, is some of the additional data that we can capture for our program. So let me, um, let me do this. I wanna just go here to my, just my normal, uh, summary, sorry, right there in front of me. So my standard view, I have my different project types and you can see all of the data in here. I'm grouped by portfolio and my different projects and you could see those different types of tools coming into use here in this particular environment. So Jim talked about that, that ability to connect a tool of choice. So yes, project for the web is here. Some of these projects are being managed that way, but what we find with all of our customers is they also want to use an agile environment, whether that's DevOps or Jira or something else, or they want to use Planner, or they want to still use Microsoft Project Desktop for projects. All of those are represented in this particular environment because we connect to all of them, yet bring them in here so that we can see them in one environment as part of one plan. And if I drill into one of those projects, this is where we can capture that additional information uh, over and above what the accelerator contained. So first I might wanna capture my budget information. So here we're looking at a budget for this particular project and we filled out the information based on a capital or, re, or a cost breakdown structure rather and some categories. And now we are filling in where and when that budget would occur. I could then later compare that to a forecast, to actuals, I could track it against benefits and other different metrics I might want to track. So if I want to compare it to actuals, we would start to see where actuals are starting to come into play and we would be able to track those. This project doesn't have any actuals yet. So we're looking pretty good. Okay, so we would be able to capture all of that information here. These are the things that customers are looking to do with their uh, uh, project management offices and their tracking of projects. Likewise, now I want a rich method for defining the, the resources on my project schedule, when I need them, how much I need them for, and be able to see that in the context of what else they might be working on. So here I have filled out a resource plan. We've got some generic resources like the project manager on there, and we've got some named resources. And we could see very quickly, you know, if I pick on Amy just quickly and I hover over that, there's other commitments there that's causing a small overage, hence the yellow. This one's much more, uh, concerning because Grace has a ton of extra work and we're gonna have to work through that. And so I could start to look at what my options might be. I could come in here and say, well, Grace has negative availability. These are the other projects that, that she is on in this particular scenario. And I could see where the conflicts are arising. So I might want to, as a PM, request a different resource because clearly 
Grace working on this project in that time window is, is unlikely because of those other conflicts. Or as a resource manager down here in the resources, I could come in resource plans, I could look at that and come to the project and say, due to uh, changes in another project, something got delayed, something has happened, we need to make some changes here because we don't have that availability that we thought we did. So it's that rich information that we bring to the table by aggregating all of this data and giving you the user experience to come in and define where these resources are needed and how much. We still have the capability of the work plan, so depending on which work schedule we might have, uh, we could come in here and look at this schedule. This one's gonna load up, I think it's Project Pro, and it's gonna give me, whoops, that's, that's coming from Azure DevOps. Let me jump over to the actual schedule. And this capability, oops, didn't click. This capability is coming from the project schedule within Project Professional. And there you go. So this particular project is connected both to DevOps and to project. And so I have that ability to pull that data in, see where I'm going on my project, and then also look at other items in that hybrid scenario that we might be managing through DevOps. I wanna jump out to the analyzer again and spend a bit of time on some of the rich views that we've added in here to do the portfolio optimization and alignment. So let me start with just the list views. We have, you can build any number of list views you might want. I might wanna look at this and say, you know, uh, what's my effort summary for each of my projects? And now it's gonna load up an effort summary and show me the hours, schedule effort and remaining, a whole host of types of views. Before I do the prioritization, I'll sort of tour some of these other ones. This is a popular view with our clients is they wanna be able to look at all these projects in a board view. And here I am looking at it by business unit. I haven't set up any lanes, so I might set up a lane, might be a program or it might be uh, uh, some other type of metric like an objective. And I wanna look at all that. We're color coding based on health. We're showing budget and some other things. If we had a backlog here, we could pull this in and say, well, where does it belong? What business unit is that project going to? And I can drag it in and put it into that business unit and add it to my board. I might wanna change that board around. I wanna do uh, prioritization, I'll do PI planning program increment planning. So now I'm looking at my different program increments in here and we've defined P1, P2 and so forth. We've set a target budget and we have items in each one and we can start to look at where are we over and under, where we might we move some of these cards to balance that the program increments. So rich modern planning capabilities that our clients frequently ask us for, uh, we're able to provide here again in keeping with Microsoft's vision of where they want this to go, and where they're investing around using Power Apps to do this capability, but adding some rich, rich capability for people to use. Lastly, before I do the other planning, I'll just quickly do the roadmap. So here I'm looking at, again, by business unit and how those different projects overlay with each other. Again, we have the health color coded on here so that we could see the interrelationship between these projects, the rough timing of them, and what their status is today. Very popular view. Clients uh, value this view when they're when they're planning out their 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 list of projects. I'll jump to the prioritization. I wanted to spend a bit of time here. So here's my my standard list of projects, and through intake and through the the creation of a business case, we would have defined how each project aligned to a set of of business objectives that would have been configured within the system that's your, your objectives. We could quickly say, well, I wanna do a stack rank prioritization. So I'm gonna turn that on. You'll see their stack rank. I can literally grab a project and move it down the list if I so choose. And I can move other projects up and down, depending on where I want them to reside just based on what priority we, we set on them as an organization. That's not really the number two project I want to move it down. But I wanna go a layer further. I wanna look at this using uh, a financial model and I wanna say I've got a target here. I'm just gonna use my FY21 budget and it's gonna pull up that I have this particular target and I have forecasted projects and I want to figure out how I might move the money around. I should have an FY22 target actually. I'll use this one. So I have my different projects and now I want to start moving projects in and out. So I may say, well, we can't do those. That one's on hold anyway. And I'm gonna to start to move these and you'll see that my calculations begin to change and I'm not gonna try and balance this out right now. But the purpose here is to 
whatever that goal was, that target, how do we move the projects accordingly so that they meet the plan uh, objective that we have? What projects should we include? So the obvious targets is anything on hold. So for this simulation or this what if analysis, I'm gonna take those out of my mix. And you can see I'm, I'm now starting to align with the this kind of silly target that we have here for those early months. Great. That's that's a positive. I could save that scenario and say, if we just act on what I think we should do in this particular scenario, we'll be fine. Alternatively, I could do this through resource planning and I could look at my resources and say, where are my resources in this particular target and how do I align to those to make sure that I can uh, get, I'm going to move this over. Make sure that I have the right resources that I need for when those projects uh, occur. And then I can do a Gantt chart and start to look at where projects are and move projects around. Sorry, there we go, there they are. And start to look at how I might move a project so that I can deal with some of these over allocations. I might say, I'm gonna move that project out and let it recalculate and figure out now that we've obviously improved that particular month. And I could keep doing this until I get them all cleaned up. And again, save that scenario. So using the data that we're capturing around resource plans and budgets and some of this other rich information, we're able to do prioritization or we can go to the board view and do our prioritization there using cards and the Kanban board. Concluding all of this, I'll jump over to the reports. Sign into Power BI, I should have done that ahead of time. As that loads up, we have a whole rich set of reports that we ship with our solution. So these, again, part of that Power Platform, part of Microsoft's vision is leveraging Power BI to deliver on the different reporting that we might wanna look at to uh, communicate and analyze and drill into that data as, as organizations need. These are very common requirements. So there's lots of different reports in here that we can leverage to further analyze the data that we're capturing in this solution. So in summary, Microsoft has a, a very powerful accelerator that helps organizations get going. It provides core capabilities that every client needs, whether that's managing the projects, risks, issues, uh, change requests on those projects, being able to organize them in programs, to be able to do intake, and to do reporting just like this. We have extensions to that accelerator that immediately add financials, resource management, uh, timesheets, my work, and some of those other components. But Power Apps gives us this ability to take it so much further and to do things like uh, ideation exercises with challenges and so forth, to create portfolios or other organizational structures that we might want to do. Those could be products, not portfolios. To be able to do uh, the strategic orientation around OKRs, uh, richer benefits tracking. We've seen all kinds of requests that customers have brought to us, and that's the beauty of where the Power Apps platform takes us. It's what Microsoft's vision is for how this can evolve and grow, and you're seeing that in sort of the kinds of solutions that we're building for our customers, leveraging one plan as the backbone for some of the rich capabilities that customers are asking for. And with that, Jim, I'll turn it back over to you. Thanks for a great demonstration, Paul. Uh, let me know when you can see me. I can. All right, terrific. Well, let's uh, summarize and wrap up with some potential next steps you can take. Um, so to summarize some of the concepts that we talked about already today is, you know, Microsoft is in the process of reimagining project and project online. That uh, goes without a doubt, and it's moving in this direction that we showed you here today. The new Microsoft solution is built on the Power Platform. And that's the direction Microsoft is headed with this. The Microsoft PPM Accelerator in Power Apps um, is the first step towards that. And it was built in conjunction with um, uh, Microsoft by One Plan Solutions. Now, the new Microsoft Accelerator does not have full feature parity with Project Online at this point in time. And the PPM Accelerator with One Plan, as Paul showed you, not only extends it to kind of give you that parity, but goes beyond the capabilities of Project Online. And one plan as an organization, we can provide the solution services and support to ensure your customer transition, value, and success. We'll talk about some of the things we're going to talk about next week if you're interested in joining us. So ultimately, the Project Accelerator plus one plan 
really provides an overall modern solution that extends beyond what you may be doing today with Project or Project Online. So from a solution comparison, I won't go into this in too much detail today, but the combination of Accelerator with OnePlan goes beyond just what Project Online did and has some capabilities that it did not have in there or to the degree that it has within this combined solution. Excuse me. So our next webinar uh, at this time next Thursday will be the future of Microsoft Project Online, next gen PPM on the Power Platform. This will kind of talk about customers that are currently on Project Online and what this means for them and how they can get from point A to point B and things that they should be considering as they move forward and uh, how uh, one plan solutions can assist them in making that transition smooth and getting the maximum benefit out of it. So go to oneplan.ai slash webinars and you can register for that webinar next Thursday if you haven't done so already. Also, if you wanna try the PPM Accelerator, if you have access to do that and you have authorization to do that in your organization, um, you can actually download that from AppSource. Uh, we actually have a download of it uh, available to you. And if you want us, we can actually give you some chaperoning and some assistance in order to make this trial effective. And on top of that, you can actually try the Adaptive Project Portfolio Management uh, uh, trial of one plan and try its capabilities and get hands on with that as well. That's also up in App Source. And we have not only the adaptive project and portfolio management, but we also have a standalone things for strategic portfolio management, just standalone agile portfolio management. And we're coming out with professional services automation as well. Now, as far as a special offer, if you're interested and you're wondering, you know, how do I get started on this or how should I plan for this? Um, we offer a free roadmap workshop where we'll review your current use of solutions and tools and assess your current requirements and desired future state. What needs to be in that future state and determine uh, and let you know how, what it would take to migrate into that new solution or implement and what would be best for a roadmap for you for adoption and success and what that might cost in order to do that. Interestingly enough, a lot of this new stuff, if you're already a project professional or Microsoft, what they call plan three user, you may already own some of the, a lot of the things you already saw here today. It's just a matter of implementing uh, and taking advantage of what you already have access to. So in the next steps, you can try one of the trials and we're happy to chaperone you on those things and give you some assistance. That roadmap workshop, or Paul gave a very generalized demonstration today. If you'd like a more personalized one-on-one -on -one demo addressing your specific pain points and your needs, we're happy to schedule that with you. And you can reach out to us at contact at oneplan.ai. So with that, I'd like to thank you uh, on behalf of OnePlan. Um, you know, OnePlan is an organization. Uh, we are invested in success, and that means your success. Uh, you can see more of us at uh, www.oneplan.ai. Once again, the contact us emails down below, or if you care to reach out to either myself or Paul Estabrooks directly, those emails are down there as well. And you'll be getting a copy of these slides here sometime within the next 24 hours. So thank you everybody for your time today. And hope you have a great day.